Hello. We will be discussing here some issues revolving around correlation as it applies to risk analysis. And in particular, we'll be talking about the correlation of data that are related but have a nonlinear relationship. As you probably know, correlation is very important to producing a quality risk analysis model. If important correlations within a system that we're trying to model are not taken into account or built into the model, the results of the model will be probably worse than useless. They'll be deceptive and inaccurate and can actually lead to worse decisions than if we didn't have the risk analysis model at all. So let's look at a quick example. We have here some historical data. It's really pairs of, of historical data. And the way to think about this is each one of these sets of two samples are samples of two different parameters, but these two samples were taken at the same time. And so we believe that they have a relationship. So I've pl actually plotted these, and one of the ways to get a, uh, a good idea about whether a correlation exists or not is to start with the scatter plot. I've already done that and hidden it in our spreadsheet here. I'll go ahead and unhide it. And there you go. What, what we've actually produced here is some data that comes from a chart that we call the probability smile. Uh, if you look at it, it's clearly uh, that it's very clear that the data f from these two sets of data are, are related. They produce this nice pretty picture of the smiley face. And so we know just by looking at this chart that our data is correlated in some way. So the next question is, if we want to allow for that in our risk analysis model, how do we do it? Now, what most risk analysis tools do is they use something called rank order correlation. But there's a real uh, weakness to using this technique, and that is that the rank order correlation assumes that and can really only model or understand if the two variables or the multiple variables being correlated have a, re a linear relationship. Clearly these have a relationship, but it's certainly not a linear relationship, these two sets of data or these two sets of data points. So what many people will do when they're trying to model nonlinear data is they'll use something called a copula. Copula is a very complex or sophisticated mathematical technique, and so I won't go into it in detail here, but I'd encourage you to look at the model risk help file for more detail on the mechanics behind a copula. Now, model risk is uh, unique among our peers in that we do have some copulas built in that we can use for correlating nonlinear data. So let's go ahead and look at the ones we have. We'll, go, we'll first select all the data that we have in our probability smile. Then we have, under the model risk ribbon, there's a button called fit. Under the fit, we have several options. There's a multivariate copula and a bivariate copula. Bivariate meaning two variables. We'll go ahead and select that because that's how many sets of data we have. There are five different types of copulas that are built into model risk, and each one is sort of specialized on a certain kind of correlation pattern, as you can see here. We can do a fitting procedure to see maybe which one is the best fit for us. So we'll select all of them. Click OK. What we can see here is the, the copula fit window. If we look, if we just click the data button, we can see the red dots are the data, our original historical data. If we click combined, it shows a historical data along with the fitted copula. In this case, we fitted the Clayton, Frank, Gumbel, Normal, and T copula. Model risk uses something called information criteria to judge whether a fit is good or not, a goodness of fit statistic. In this case, what this is telling us is that the Clayton copula is the best fit. However, if we look at this, really the best measure of goodness of fit is just our eye, and we can see, wow, the red dots, which is just the data, the com we put them together in the blue dots of the copula. So this copula clearly doesn't very well fit our data. Now, the good news is that in model risk, in addition to these what we call parametric copulas, 
In addition to the parametric copulas, model risk offers something called an empirical copula. This is unique to model risk, was invented by David Vos, and it, the only place in the world that you can have access to this is through model risk. So this is an empirical copula that we've now fitted to this data. And lo and behold, the data is in the red. Again, that's our original smi probability smile. And when we combine them, the blue dots are the copula that we're, we've fitted to that data. If we're interested, we can actually go ahead and put this copula into our model. Click OK. What we now have here is these two cells are an array that represent the correlation structure built into data set A and data set B. And so we now have the possibility, if in fact we wanted to simulate into the future, perhaps forecast these two sets of data, but we want to maintain the correlation structure that comes with them based on their history, we can use these two cells, the copula, in something called a U parameter and within a, the other distributions within model risk, and we can actually re-simulate and maintain that that correlation structure. So, uh, just to review, um, representing nonlinear data in a risk analysis is very difficult using rank order correlation, which is the tool in most uh, most risk analysis Excel add-ins. Model risk is unique in offering a number of parametric copulas that can help model some of the nonlinear patterns that might be found. But in cases where the data is related, as in our smiley face, but does not well fit one of the parametric copulas, we also have access to an empirical copula which can exactly fit uh, any strange correlation structure that might come about by data or by a human invention. So hope you found this interesting. Hope you've learned something about building correlations into your models. And hope you're interested to learn more about copulas and about model risk. If that's the case, I'd encourage you to check out the model risk help file if you already have either a full or a trial license of model risk. If you don't, I'd, I'd encourage you to go to the Vos software website, www.vosesoftware.com, to request a free, fully functional 30-day trial. If you're interested in getting a copy of this model, please contact us. Be happy to provide that for you. And if you're just interested in looking at the help file, that's also available online for free from the Vose software website. Our sister company is Vose Consulting. They're also our main reseller. If you have any questions regarding sales issues or technical issues, I'd encourage you to contact them as well. You can reach them at these numbers or on the Internet via www.voseconsulting.com.